if we have one power, we go and reach there to see the scene and maybe it is worth the kupata mili yawale ambao waliwawa. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Chief Mamo Honiche, speaking to us there from uh, Forole. For we'll definitely keep tabs on this story. We'll uh, definitely follow it up. They're still trying to get the bodies because of the distance from the town to the area where this incident happened. And definitely police are also investigating this matter, so we'll be keeping you updated on this. Let's move on now to four suspects who are caught on video brutally assaulting a man identified as Kelvin Mango in Nairobi's Kilimani Estate. They were today charged with causing grievous bodily harm, and the four were arrested following public outrage over the incident that is said to have gone on for about six hours. Seth Olali reports that the men who assaulted Mango have been described as arrogant and flashy. Police have linked this man captured on camera, viciously attacking Kelvin Mango Odwar to Nairobi politician Robert Omwenga Momani. Momani, who contested for the Makadara parliamentary seat on a jubilee ticket, is also the first accused person, together with his co-accused Collins Neriko, Stanley Rimbere and Stephen Kimeu. The four were charged jointly with others not before court with causing grievous harm to Kelvin Mango Odwar on the night of May 1st at Estate 24 on Kirichwa Road in Kilimani, Nairobi. They all denied the charges and were released on a 300,000 shillings cash bill each. Kevin the second accused person in the case, Collins Orina Neriko, who is suspected to be the youthful man seen in the video in dreadlocks, denied a separate count of damaging Mango's mobile phone valued at 160000 yes, While little is still known about the third accused, Stephen Kimeu, the fourth accused, Stanley Rimbere Kithia, is said to be the tenant of the house where the night torture took place. A fifth suspect who was before a Kibera court on Monday on a different charge will take plea on Tuesday. Neighbors who only agreed to speak to us off the record for fear of reprisals said the group frequents the estate to party in flashy cars with no registration number plates. They often play loud music, but neighbors say they won't dare report them for causing disturbance. They are also said to possess houses in Nairobi's posh estates of Karen and Kileleshwa. A source informed NTV that Robert Omwenga Momani was spotted arriving with Kelvin Mango Odwar at Stanley Rimere Kithia's residence along Kirichwa Road in Kilimani. Thereafter, his assailants pounced on him, brutally beating him up for more than six hours. He only managed to escape at dawn. The case will be heard on June 13th. The exact place where the incident happened last week along Kiricho Road remains a crime scene, even as investigators not ruling out possibility of the suspects involved belonging to a wider group. Seth Olale, NTV, Nairobi. All right, from that, let's shift focus now to the education sector. And the government will not register any new universities in the country as the sector undergoes reforms to streamline it. Education Cabinet Secretary Professor George Magoha says the existing universities are already too many in a sector that is increasingly focusing on quantity over quality. NTV's Brenda Wanga reports. The higher education landscape in Kenya has changed significantly in the last decade. The number of institutions offering university education nearly doubling from an initial 18 fully-fledged universities to 49 and 25 others awaiting the award of charter. Do you think this very quantitative rapid expansion has been accompanied by due diligence with, in terms of getting the requisite faculty? What the growth has been lauded in some quarters, the saturation of the institutes, and not just in close proximity, is becoming a point of concern for those running the education sector. Somebody should tell me why we should have six universities in an area of 30 or 40 square kilometers teaching exactly the same thing. 
It is stupid in capital letters because it means you have to provide four different faculty instead of synergizing by allowing the faculty to come together. Are we together? And you right size by getting the staff that is not required out of your system. Indeed, the city's CBD is a prime example of this. A myriad of universities and constituent colleges dot the landscape. Some are stone throw away from each other, and many of them offering similar cases. We do not need to proliferate. We need to consolidate so that we focus not in terms of the number of institutions, but also in terms of the academic programs that we are offering in these institutions. These academic programs must be relevant, and we need to leverage on technology. You must apply the brakes. You must apply the brakes, because uh, if you don't apply the brakes, somebody else is going to apply the brakes for you. Towards this end, the Ministry of Education now wants the stakeholders to focus on the provision of quality education rather than emphasis on the quantity. The CS has also challenged the universities to specialize in the courses they offer in order to attract government funding. The Commission for University Education now has just three months to produce a report that will detail the status of the university education in Kenya, both in terms of infrastructure and human resource. Now, this report will form the basis of the continuing reforms in the university sector. Brenda Wanga, NTV, Nairobi. NAC Kenya leader Martha Karua has condemned the court ruling that awarded 27 million shillings to former Interior Minister Chris Murungaru as damages for defamation. Karua says the decision was unfair since Murungaru had been removed from office over these very allegations. She also says former ethics PS John Gidongo's claims were not defamatory and she supports the move to appeal the verdict. The award is alarming enough to scare potential whistleblowers and even the media. And all this is coming at a time when Kenya as a country is witnessing unprecedented number of corruption scandals involving billions of shillings. It is happening at a time when not a single angro leasing case has been successfully concluded and when known suspects masqueraded as test witnesses in a design seen as aimed at defeating justice. I would encourage John Gedongo to exhaust the chain of justice in the hope that ultimately justice will not only be done, but be seen to be done. Elsewhere, ODM leader Raila Odinga has once again reiterated that the war on corruption is not targeting any individual or community. Odinga says the vice is permeated through every level of society and must be fought in every way. He was speaking after meeting leaders from Garissa County at his office for discussion on issues around the Building Bridges initiative. Listen in. We want also to ensure that the, the resources of our country are used for the benefit of our people. And that's why we have targeted corruption as a major enemy of the people of Kenya. This war against corruption, as we have said before, does not target any particular individual or community, but it is aimed at criminals who have been plundering the wealth of our country. We have also said that uh, we will re-examine the governance structure of our country to make it more uh, responsive to the needs of our people. Well, and to some changes in the military now, Chief of Defense Forces General Samson Mwadede's term of service is being extended for another year following the advice of the Defense Council. Well, his term expired this month after serving a four-year term as per the law, but the KDF Act also allows the President to extend the term of office of military chiefs for a period not exceeding one year. 
Mother, the a naval officer was appointed on the 17th of April 2015 and has held various command positions such as the Vice Chief of the Defence Forces, Navy Commander, Deputy Navy Commander and Navy Logistics Commander. And in other changes announced today, 25 other officers were reposted, promoted and others appointed. Well, 20 minutes past the hour, we take a short break. We'll be back with more stories. With us, three people died and 23 others are nursing injuries in hospital after three vehicles collided along the Nairobi-Nakuru Highway. 
This morning's accident adds to the dispiriting statistics on road carnage that has continued to claim lives. Anita Nkonge has more details. The light of day only uncovered the horror of the early morning incident. Police left to pick up the pieces of yet another gruesome scene. An accident along the Nairobi Nakuru Highway that this time took three lives and left 23 others nursing injuries at various hospitals. The early morning smash-up involved two matatus and a pickup truck, bringing home yet again the impression of too little too late and the jarring statistics on road carnage. In a chilling report by the National Transport and Safety Authority, 3,153 people died in the country's roads in 2018. This represents an 8% increase from the numbers in 2017, which NTSA puts at 2,919. The report also found that pedestrians accounted for the highest number of deaths. 1,204 people died in 2018, a 13.6 increase from 2017's 1,060. In the same year, 836 motorcyclists died compared to 2017's 715 deaths. Most of those who died were hit-and-run victims, with private motor vehicles accounting for most of these deaths, followed by motorcycles and public service vehicles. Sunday proved to be the most dangerous day to be on the road last year, followed by Monday, Friday and Tuesday. The National Police Service is encouraging the public to give out information to security officers that could improve road safety. This is something that is preventable. All what we need is to change our behavior. So we don't need a lot. If we all made a resolve today, all the citizens of this country made a resolve today that we shall drive safely, we shall be mindful of all road users, this problem will come to an end. The police will start a major country-wide crackdown on those who will not have complied once the notice is given by any TSA experts. Anita Nkonge, NTV. Two decomposing bodies of students from Kenya Methodist University and Chuka University were found in a hostel a few meters from Kemu University. Residents living around there say that they were drawn by a foul smell emanating from one of the rooms in the hostel. Upon investigating, they found the lifeless bodies of a man and a woman in a room. Both were 21 years old and are said to have been lovers. Instead of pointing fingers to each other as a society, we need to find out the root causes of some of these things that are happening when young people kill each other and kill themselves. And it doesn't stop there. Police in Matungu in Kakamega County are on the hunt for a gang of robbers responsible for the reign of terror there. About 10 people have been killed in the last month and the gang's latest victims include an expectant mother. From Kakamega, NTV's Zakes Mwasame reports that area leaders have also been put on the spot over suspicion that they could be behind the killings. An incredible human disaster unfolds in a once gentle and peaceful land. Violence has been tearing through these villages in the last three weeks, leaving behind crushed families. In the latest episode of brutality, three members of one family were attacked and murdered by a gang of robbers at Chayangwe village. I'm talking, I'm going to talk. An expectant woman, Petronia Rapachi, and her three year old daughter, Sharon Rapachi, were hacked to death. Her husband, Stephen Rapachi, was left with serious machete wounds. Just last night, a gang attacked an Mpesa agent at Shibanzi Market in Matungu. He was robbed of all his possessions before being killed. In response, border, border operators killed two suspected members of a gang from Matungu and the Ginger Markets. Watu wanachukua sheria mikononi mwao ilihali serikali inaona. Kwa sababu wakati huya napigwa, napigwa machoni mwa polisi, wakijaribu kuzuia na nini. Polisi wanangia nyingi ambazo wamesomea kuzuia. <coughs> Spate of killings have ignited the chorus of concern. Leo nataka kushukuru maafisa wa serikali kwa ile kazi wamefanya leo usiku. Wameshika watu wawili na wamepatikana na panga amba ilikuwa na damu. Wamepatikana na toy, toy, pistol. Nijasikia mzuri. 
lazima kuanzia Tuesday tunataka tuende huko tujue ni nini ambao aswa iko matungu Police have however assured residents of their security two suspects who were found in possession of a homemade pistol and a machete are in police custody We've recovered uh, an axe ambayo ilikuwa na blood na toy pistol that I can confirm for sure the motive of the Matungu killings is still unclear, although the police are putting together pieces of information in regards to these attacks. Several families have been left in mourning as they wait for answers from the authorities. Zakis Masami, NTV, Kakamega. All right, elsewhere, the Anti-Corruption Court will on Thursday rule on three applications filed by various respondents in the fraud case against the former Kenya Bureau of Standards Managing Director Charles Ongwai and others. In one of the responses, the Kenya Revenue Authority is opposed to summons issued by the court to its officials over the alleged defiance of court orders. The accused persons are facing charges of attempted murder for signing off the release of fertilizer said to be laced with mercury to farmers. Let's move on now. Police in Kabartonjo in Baringo North are investigating the brutal murder of a 15-year-old boy whose mutilated body was found by the roadside near his home. Kevin Bowen's eyes had been gouged out, his nose cut off and his body skinned in a suspected case of a family dispute. Here's NTV's Eunice Omolo. Veiled in the serene rolling landscapes of Cassesia area, Baringa North, a macabre tale of murder rattles the community. The unsightly scene was that of the mutilated body of a 15-year-old boy. His life snuffed out, and so were his eyes and nose. His entire body had also been skinned. Police in Kabartonjo, Baringo North, have started investigation into the horrid murder of Kevin Bowen, a standard eight pupil at the Cassesia Primary School. Wale wale usika wote wameshikwa na kustakiwa na hiyo kifo ya huyo mwanafunzi. According to Baringo County Police Commander Robinson Diwa, the boy was doing odd jobs at a neighbor's house at the time. Ni kitendo kipaya na imekuwa usuni katika kichichi hii. Kwa hivyo naomba kwamba hati wakati huu tuko na wasiwasi kwa sababu atuelewi ikiwa kuna mtu anaweza kukata mtoto na je na mtu mzima the body of the minor was taken to Baringo County Referral Hospital in Kabarnet awaiting a postmortem examination. Eunice Omolo, NTV. All right, that sort of cruelty is just unacceptable and unimaginable, really. Um, it, it's been a really heavy 30 minutes. Let's shift focus now. We're taking a break on NTV tonight. The business news with our colleague Julian Zamboko is coming up.
is time to get down to business. Welcome, I am Julian Amboko, and we start with a look at the business environment. Now, the business environment deteriorated for the first time in 18 months in April 2019, according to the Stanbic Bank Purchasing Managers Index, which fell to 49.3 compared to 51 in the preceding month. According to Stanbic Bank's findings, businesses took a hit from the effects of the adverse weather conditions, which are reported to have resulted in a general decline in new orders compared to March 2019, something which is bound to negatively impact the bottom line of many business ventures. In the same period, businesses reported a slight decline in the size of the workforce, an indication of belt tightening measures being adopted by businesses, confronting a challenging environment. Inflation shot to 6.6% in April 2019 from 4.4% in the preceding month, something which is bound to impact the input prices of businesses. And also, amazed farmers in the North Rift region are facing the possibility of lower yields this year following erratic and late rainfall this season. Many farmers are now replanting while others adopt a wait-and-see attitude to see if their crop will survive. Gabriel Kudaka with the details. When the heavens finally opened about two weeks ago, following a prolonged dry spell that has been witnessed in various parts of the country, most farmers sighed relief and rushed to their farms. Some chose to replant after the maize they had planted earlier withered due to harsh weather conditions. Julius Ngetich from Cheplaskei region in Wasingishu County thought he would be lucky after the maize that had failed to germinate two months ago due to prolonged drought finally sprouted last week. Sasa wakati mvua ya pili ilikuja hii ni ya wiki moja ikinyeshia hizi ndio unaona simetokea. Ndio unaona nimetoka zote lakini hazijatoka zote vizuri. Ju manake mvua the onset of heavy rains about two weeks ago was a major relief to farmers, with some choosing to replant following prolonged dry spell. But its inconsistency is a major source of worry. As others take a leap of faith to plant maize, hoping that the rains would somehow sustain their crop, some have given up altogether and are now preparing their farms for wheat planting, which normally starts in the month of June. Some few scattered maize plants that had somehow survived the drought because of being in a moist region are facing another threat from the fall armyworm invasion, thereby further painting a gloomy picture of the maize farming sector. Gabriel Kudaka, NTV. And elsewhere, the anti-counterfeit authority has over the last one month seized goods worth over 100 million shillings, most of them being imports set to be distributed across the country. The goods include electrical appliances, motor vehicle spare parts, sportswear, and digital TV antenna. Among the seized goods was a 40-foot container of fake circuit breakers imported from China, valued at over 10 million shillings seized on Saturday. Speaking during an inspection tour at the Inland Container Depot in Nairobi, the authorities chairperson Flora Mutahi said the agency is strengthening its capacity to detect counterfeit products at the ports of entry through use of modern technology. Based on um, you know how they describe the goods, because there's a, a lot of misdeclaration of goods, like these ones came in as just as, as just circuit breakers with no brand name, then we you know we flag those and actually then target them and open them for verification. So that alone, the, the, the seizure on Saturday was um, up to the value of 10 million. We will seize this and we'll put into the customs warehouse and from there we'll call for documentation and because these goods have the clearing agents, we'll get to the owners of this product through the clearing agents who should be having the records of the owners of these products. And thereafter, the full investigation will be undertaken and on to news further afield, the trade escalation between the U.S. and China is having an adverse impact on the volume of trade between the two global powers. Over the weekend, U.S. President Donald Trump said the earlier proposed tariff hikes against Chinese products could take effect on Friday. 
Trump said he may target another 325 billion U.S. dollars worth of Chinese goods in the short term. Chinese exports to the U.S. in March fell 47 percent compared to June last year. On the other hand, imports of Chinese goods by the U.S. were 17 percent lower. There are increasing fears that the trade war between the two nations could lead to a significant decline in global economic growth this year if it becomes fully blown. And up next, we have the financial report. That's it from the business desk tonight. Do enjoy the rest of your viewing. When the spirit of Kenya got green.
Thanks for staying with us. Now, the diagnosis of a condition that leads to developmental challenges is difficult for any parent. The cost of the required rehabilitation of such patients adds to distress. Now, occupational therapy is costly and rather unavailable, especially to parents who didn't anticipate the problem, which is, of course, usually the case. And as Charity Mangi reports on this week's My Job segment, Don Nyera's passion for occupational therapy drives him to make home visits that are of great comfort to the families of patients. On any other given day, John Nyera is up at 4.30 a.m. And by 6 a.m. in the morning, he is already into his first session with his first client of the day. This is his third session. The time is 10 a.m. He understands the importance of his job, especially to parents who entrust their most prized possession, their babies, to him. Now, when I find a parent is in a panic mood, mostly it's all about you share out with various examples to encourage them. John begins his job by stimulating his client's muscles, depending on the challenges that necessitated them to seek his services. Yeah. Most patients are such as severe patients, which in other words can say stroke, the spectrum cases such as autism, then uh, other cases we have got uh, jaundice, others are cerebral palsy. Meningeal patients, most will find they do regress in their milestone. It is something that affects the brain. The bipolar cases, the schizophrenia cases, those are examples of the psychiatric cases we see. I will now try to maintain the joint ranges of, mo of motion. That is ensuring that there is full flexion extension of the elbow, the shoulder joints, the hip joint, the knee joint, up to the ankle joint. This part of the session, according to John, can be done even by a physiotherapist. But then once the baby's clothes are put back on, his main task begins. It is uncomfortable to watch, but John tells us all the motions and exercises are well calculated and expertly executed to the benefit of the patient. One month, let me work on eye contact, eye tracking skills, toys. Two months, let me work on head control. Corolling there is at six months, let's go to sitting and onwards and onwards until it reaches a point this child is independent to run outside, play like other children. John laments the stigma that at times forces parents to hide their children who present certain conditions. He says help is available. In African setups, you'll find most people say, okay, tutafanya hivi na hivi, mtoto arudi, akuwe sawa. Ama, ah, hiyo wacha tu, atacheza, atakuwa sawa. Then at reaches a point, they find, okay, it's kind of a disability. They find so many cases of autistic people turning out to be very big people in the society are coming up with something very creative. The cost of John's services is relatively high on account of the unavailability of the service. If now the, you have come into an agreement with a parent or somebody on how much they're going to, you're going to charge them for a session, then the parent also has to understand that this is not a one-day thing. John encourages those with the training not to wait for employment, but instead use the skills they have to create a livelihood for themselves. He started doing home visits upon the recommendation of doctors who believed in his skills and passion. Try find somebody who is maybe of an experience with maybe a license, lean on that person to help you get the referrals. At a later time, you acquire your own license, then now develop yourself from there. The parents are appreciative of the convenience of having John attend to their children at home. From day one, I've noticed the difference because at first he was not the way he is right now. John will traverse the city from one estate to another in order to get to his patients. He sees up to seven patients every day. His is indeed a calling. Charity Mwangi, NTV.
Well, Father Rafael, 58 people died in Niger's capital near May overnight when an overturned tanker truck exploded as crowds tried to collect sp uh, spilt fuel, authorities and witnesses said on Monday. Another blast near Niamey's International Airport left the burnt truck's wreckage, motorbikes and debris scattered over the road. Nearby houses were also damaged by fire. The toll from the explosion was 55 dead and 36 injured, an interior ministry spokesman said. Witnesses said people were trying to collect petrol leaking from the truck, which had overturned on the railway tracks when the explosion happened. We'll take a short break. Sports is coming up next with uh, Aida Waringa. With Dennis O'Curry. record holder Elliot Kipchoge hopes that second time will be the charm when he attempts to become the first athlete to run under two hours. That announcement was appropriately made on the 65th anniversary of Sir Roger Bannister, who was the first man to run a sub four minute mile. The greatest marathoner alive is at it again. <laughs> Barely a week after setting the second fastest time in history en route to winning the London Marathon, Elid Kipchoge will attempt to break the two-hour marathon barrier at the INEOS 159 Challenge this year. My mind is that uh, I'm going to do it. 
So my heart and my mind is on one fifth line. The world record holder clocked two hours and 25 seconds at the breaking two Nike project back in 2017 and will be buoyed by the fact that he's since set the fastest and second fastest times in marathon history. The sport has come a long way from 1954 when Englishman Sir Roger Bannister became the first athlete to run a sub four minute mile. 59.4 seconds, shattering the four minute mile, the Everest of athletic achievement. And the event organizers believe that the Olympic marathon gold medalist is the man to take it to the next level. Probably the greatest sporting challenge that's left, certainly in anything involving endurance or athletics. So Elliot is the finest marathon runner. With, you know, the world's ever produced, and uh, he's in his prime. He's the only man in the world that can break two hours, absolutely no question about it. Or ever has been, frankly. His thoughts echoed by fans in Kipchoge's hometown in Uwasin Gishu County. Kipchoge kuna wesekano aka kimbia kwa uo muda kwa sababu, mazoesi yale anafanya saini ya... Hali ya juu sana. Kipchoge ni mtu hatari sana. Huyo jamaa mazoezi yake yanafanya ni mazoezi ya hali ya juu sana. Kama alishinda zile je itakuwa aje na akona Mungu ni mtu ya Mungu sana. So akisema anakimbia kwa 2 hours it's not a miracle. Anaweza. Similar to the breaking two private race, this attempt will not be an official record as he will be assisted by small groups of pacemakers who will run predefined segments of the circuit before handing over to another group and the Kenyan won't have to slow down for feed stations as drinks will be delivered by scooter. The secret is believing on the challenge. The secret is trusting on the challenge. The secret is believing on myself that I can do it. And the, the secret actually is trusting that uh, I have capability to do it. All the best to the greatest of all time. Some football now. And Ulinzi Stars bounced back from their two-match losing streak by beating Nzoya Sugar 1-0 in an evenly contested Kenyan Premier League match played at their Praha Stadium. Having lost to champions Gormahia and Bandari last week, the soldiers' labor paid off courtesy of Bernard Ongome's lone strike in the 82nd minute. The win does take them to 8th on 39 points, while Nzoya remain 13th on 32. At the Kenyatta Stadium in Machakos, KCB banked a vital win that took them to 11th, tied on 34 points with Western Steamer. And with six rounds of matches left until the end of the Kenyan Premier League season, the race for the league's golden boot is heating up. It's currently neck and neck between Kakamega homeboys captain Alan Wanga and Sofa Packers Ugandan whiz Umaru Kasumba, both at 16 goals, by the way. The veteran striker gave us his thoughts on the race for league top scorer. Every striker's dream, uh, a core top scorer, as in, in a season so... I don't want to put pressure on myself. I, I just try to take each game at a time. I give my best in game, chance to keep at Yeah, and we celebrate. So, so far, so good. Uh, and we, we are hoping for the best. Kenya's under-20 rugby team, Chipu, has landed in the pool of death at the 2019 World Rugby Under-20 Trophy, slated for July 9th to 21st in Brazil. The new African champions will come up against 2008 winners Uruguay, who've been... <laughs>